In this video, we are now going to look at how the concentration of the reactant changes with time for a zero order reaction. So if I have a zero order reaction, say A giving me products, and let's say that initially at time t equal to zero, I started this reaction with say, let's say I started this with 200 molar of A. So in this video, we'll try and figure out the concentration of A that is going to be left after a certain time t. So I want to know what will be the concentration of A after a certain time, let's say 10 minutes. So how can we figure that out? Let's see. Let's start by asking ourselves what exactly is a zero order reaction. So if this reaction is a zero order reaction, then this means that the rate of the reaction is going to be equal to the rate constant k multiplied by the concentration of the reactant raised to the power zero, right? So this basically means that the rate of the reaction is simply going to be equal to the rate constant k because anything to the power zero is going to be equal to one. So for a zero order reaction, the rate of the reaction is a constant. It's equal to the rate constant k, right? So what does this mean? So let's say that for this particular zero order reaction, let's say that the rate of the reaction was found out to be equal to two molar per minute. So this means that when I started this reaction, when I had 200 molar of A, then this reactant A was getting converted into the product at a rate of two molar per minute. So per minute, two molar of A was getting converted into the products. Now, if I leave this reaction and if I come back, say, after one hour, and if I again check the rate of reaction, I'll find out that even now, this A is getting converted into the products at two molar per minute. So even after one hour per minute, I'll still see that two molar of A is getting converted into the products. So the rate of reaction for a zero order reaction doesn't change and is constant throughout the course of the reaction. Now this is actually kind of special because generally in a chemical reaction, this rate of reaction does change with time. And generally as the reaction keeps progressing, the rate of the reaction slowly keeps decreasing. However, this is not the case for a zero order reaction. Their rates are constant throughout the course of the reaction. And we have talked a lot about this in a previous video. So feel free to check it out if you want a quick refresher. So now that we have established what constant rate means, let us try and figure out the concentration of A out here after a certain time, uh, let's say after 10 minutes. So after 10 minutes, what do you think will be the concentration of A? You can pause the video and see if you can come up with the answer. So in this particular reaction, we know that per minute, two molar of A is getting converted into the products, right? And whatever happens, this rate always remains constant. So in 10 minutes, so in 10 minutes, we can say that the amount of air that has converted is going to be 10 times of two molar. So this is going to be equal to 20 molar, right? So in one minute, two molar of air gets converted into the product. And because the rate is constant, so in 10 minutes, 20 molar of air would have gotten converted into the product, right? So the amount of air that is left after 10 minutes, it's not going to be equal to 200 molar, clearly. So it's going to be equal to 200 minus of this value. So it's 200 minus of 10 times of 2. So this is going to be equal to 200 minus of 20. So it's going to be equal to 180 molar, right? So the amount of air that is going to be left after 10 minutes, it's going to be equal to 180 molar. Pretty straightforward, right? So now let's try and see if we can make up a general formula for this. So now instead of saying that initially I had 200 molar of air, let's say that the initial concentration of air let's say that this was a naught and let's say that after some time t so after some time t let us say that the concentration of a dropped down to say 80 so 80 is the concentration of a at after some time t 
while A0 is the concentration of A that I had initially. Now if the rate of the reaction is equal to the rate constant, so let's keep the rate constant as K. So what will be the concentration of AT after some time T? What is this formula going to look like? Well clearly it's not going to be equal to A0, right? It's going to be lower than A0. And if a rate of the reaction is K, so it means K molar of A is getting reacted per unit time. So in one minute, if K molar of A is getting reacted, then in T minutes, the amount of A that is going to be reacted is going to be equal to K times of T, right? So the concentration of A that is going to be left after some time T is going to be equal to A0 minus of KT. So this is how the concentration of the reactant changes with time for a zero order reaction. Let us now take a look at this particular zero order reaction. Even out here, the rate of the reaction is equal to the rate constant K, which is given to be two molar per minute. Let us now try and figure out the concentration of air that will be left after five minutes. You can also pause the video to come up with your answer. Well, out here, the rate of reaction is two molar per minute. So we might be tempted to say that in one minute, the concentration of air that gets reacted is 2 molar. So in one minute, we might be tempted to say that 2 molar of air gets reacted. And so in 5 minutes, the amount of air that is going to get converted into the products is going to be 2 times of 5. So this is going to be equal to 10 molar. And therefore, after 5 minutes, the concentration of air that is going to be left will be equal to 100 minus of 10 which is going to be equal to 90 molar. Now this is actually not the correct answer. In fact, we are making an error out here. Can you spot what we are doing wrong? So when I say that in one minute, two molar of A gets converted into the products. So what we have out here is the rate of disappearance of A, right? So this is actually talking about, it's actually telling us about the rate of disappearance of A. It's telling out about the rate at which A is getting converted into the products. Now the rate of disappearance of A need not always be equal to the rate of the reaction. We know from our previous videos that the way the rate of reaction is defined, it's, it's actually a hypothetical quantity which is defined as the rate of disappearance of the reactants or the products divided by the respective stoichiometric coefficients. So out here the stoichiometric coefficient is 2. So the rate of reaction will be the rate of disappearance of A divided by 2. This is how it is defined. If you want to know more about what rate of a reaction is and how it is defined, you can check out the video we did earlier for a quick refresher. So from here we can say that for this particular reaction, the rate of disappearance of A is actually two times the rate of reaction. So it's going to be equal to two times the rate constant K. So this is actually going to be equal to two times of this value. So this will be four molar per minute. So the rate of disappearance of A is not two molar per minute, but it's instead four molar per minute. So per minute, four molar of A is getting converted into the products and not two molar. So in one minute, two molar of A does not get converted into the products. In fact, four molar of A gets converted. So four molar of A gets converted into the products. So in five minutes, the amount of A that would have reacted would be four times of five. So this is going to be equal to 20 molar. Right, so 20 molar of A reacts in 5 minutes. So the concentration of A that is left after 5 minutes is going to be 100 minus of 20. So this is going to be equal to 80 molar. So for this particular reaction, we cannot write the general formula simply as AT is equal to A0 minus of KT, where K is the rate constant of the reaction. We cannot simply write it like this because the rate of disappearance of A out here is not equal to the rate constant K, but it is in fact equal to two times of K, 
right so the correct equation for this particular reaction would be a naught minus of two times of kt in fact let me use yellow so it is two times of kt where two is the stoichiometric coefficient of a so to summarize if you have a zero order reaction a a giving me products then in this scenario the rate of reaction will not be equal to the rate of disappearance of a in fact the rate of reaction will be equal to the rate of disappearance of a divided by a so this implies the rate of disappearance of a will be equal to a times the rate of reaction so this will be equal to a times the rate constant k so therefore the concentration of a at any time t will be equal to the concentration of a that we took initially a naught minus the rate of disappearance of a which is a times of k multiplied by the time 